In this problem, we're told that a, a catapult launches a rock at a castle wall, and the rock is launched at a 45 degree angle with an initial speed of 22 meters per second. And the castle wall is 45 meters away and is 20 meters high. And we'll assume it's launched from ground level, even though that's probably not exactly correct. We, we, we aren't told a height above the ground at which it's launched. So we'll assume launched from ground level. And we need to know if the rock is going to make it over the wall. So the rock goes sailing along here in this parabolic path. And we don't know how high it goes. Uh, presumably it would go up high enough. But we don't know if at the time it reaches the castle wall, if it's high enough. Now let me point something out. The way I've drawn this path here, I've done something deliberately to, um, to make a point here. It's possible to, I can imagine a parabola here that goes farther than the 45 meters to the right and goes higher than the 20 meters up. It still doesn't make it over the top of the wall at this point right here. So the question isn't does it go higher than 20 meters? And the question isn't, does it go farther than 45 or even both? The question is, is it at a height of 20 meters when it's 45 meters over horizontally? That's what we need to find out. We need to know if it makes it over this point, not if it reaches a maximum height above that point or a maximum distance beyond that point, but if it is above this height when it is that far over. And here's how we solve the problem. As always, we split up the horizontal and the vertical. And so to do this, we need to find the horizontal and vertical components of the initial velocity here. So I need to find v0x and v0y. And we do that with our, our trigonometry. v0x is v0 times the cosine of the angle. So that's 22 times the cosine of 45 and v0y is the initial velocity times the sine of the angle. And you do that on the calculator and you might recognize that those are both the same number. They both come out to 15.56 meters per second. Now I'm going to do the horizontal first. You could actually do this one either way, the horizontal or the vertical first, but this is easier if you do the horizontal first. Horizontally, I know that the initial velocity is 15.56 meters per second. I'm not going to use the 22. I do horizontal and vertical independently, and when I'm doing the horizontal, the initial velocity is the horizontal component of the initial velocity. And then I know something about the, the distances here. I know the, the initial position is zero, and the final position is 45 meters. So horizontally, I'm considering the motion over f from the beginning over to this point that it needs to reach horizontally. The, you know, right there, horizontally over to the edge of the castle wall. And then I could I could write out this big equation: x is x zero plus v zero t plus one half a t squared. But horizontally, there's no acceleration and there's n the initial position is zero so this equation is just x equals v0 times t so you can you can even skip writing this and just write distance is velocity times time and then we'll solve that for t so I'll write t equals x over v and then just put in these numbers 45 meters over 15.56 meters per second and that comes out to 2.89 seconds. Okay, that's the time that it takes to go 45 meters horizontally. We put in the 45 meter position there for X so the time we get is the time it takes to go 45 meters horizontally. Now we just want to find the height at that time and we'll see if it's above 20 meters or not. So to find the height at that time we think about the vertical motion. So 
So let's deal just with the vertical motion for a second. The initial velocity is not 22 meters per second. It's the vertical component of that initial velocity, 15.56 meters per second. Now, when I said that the initial velocity here was up, and I wrote that as a positive number, that implies that my positive direction is up. So the acceleration, which is always down, has to be negative. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared, the acceleration due to gravity. And I know that the initial position is zero, and I know the time, 2.89 seconds. That's not the total, the total time of the flight. That's the time it took to go that distance horizontally. We're going to put that time in and find the height at that time using this equation. y is equal to y0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. So let's put in those numbers. y0 was 0, so v0t, that's just going to be 15.56 meters per second times my time of 2.89 seconds plus, I have to come down here to the next line because I'm about out of room here, plus 1 half at squared. So that's 1 half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 2.89 seconds squared. And these units all work out. The seconds squared cancels, leaving us with meters there. And the seconds cancels there, leaving us with meters there. So my answer is a certain number of meters plus a certain number of meters. And those numbers work out to be 45 for the first one. Let me just come over here and write this. So this equals 45 meters. Then plus this negative minus, uh, that comes up to 40.9 meters. So we end up with 4.1 meters for our answer. Now the 4.1 meters, that's the height at the moment when it is horizontally at the wall. So the answer to the question then, does the rock make it over the castle wall? The answer to the question is no. But again, just writing the answer isn't sufficient. You want to show all this work and show that you understand how to do it.